Are we on? Page 662, section 23.1. We're going over life cycles here, and I know it's Friday, but you only got to give me 30 more minutes and then you're out of here. Okay? All right. So please try and pay attention. I'm going to have a break. You'll need to learn this. Test is next week. And it's on chapter 2. 22 and 23. What page there, bro? Page 662. Get the actual page I'm on. Okay. This section goes over how plants reproduce. And there's some life cycles that you need to understand. Now, the first type of uh, plant reproduction is called vegetative reproduction. And that's basically when plants clone themselves, when plants make exact copies of themselves. There's different ways to do this. Some plants put out a runner. And the runner comes from the original plant. Grasses do this. And every plant that comes up from the runner is a copy of the original. That's vegetative reproduction. Yes? I have a question. Uh, you know how when they lay down individual pieces of sod? Yes. Do those runners connect? Um, and form one big runner, or do they just stay no, separate? No, they, they stay separate. Why? They stay separate. They should, they should join. Because they cool. they're, different. they're different organisms. That would be cool. Uh, now, another thing that you saw in the test tubes, remember when they cut up the plant into little pieces and grew it in test tubes? That's vegetative reproduction, too, because it's clones of the original plant. A lot of farmers do this to make copies of plants that they really like because they produce really big fruit and such. Some plants, like mosses, can naturally break off pieces. Pieces of a moss can break off and blow around with the wind, land somewhere else, and grow into a whole new moss. That's also vegetative reproduction. <coughs> so plants have an ability to make copies of themselves or clones of themselves. And that's what the first... I don't know, three or four paragraphs are about in your reading. Seriously? A more often type of reproduction that plants do is called sexual reproduction. And this is what we're going to go over next, sexual reproduction. Now, I'm going to show you how some different types of plants do it. <laughs> do it. But first you have to understand some words. Listen. These are big words. One is called sporophyte, and another is called gametophyte. Plants have a lifestyle that's called alternation of generations. They have different bodies that have different types of cells. The sporophyte generation of a plant is when the cell bodies have two sets of chromosomes. I have a cell up here on the board, a fictional cell. And Taylor Spires, could you reach back there and pull that open so we can get maybe a little more light on this for the camera? Sure you will. If you look up here, this is a cell that has two sets of chromosomes. Really? There's a big set, a green set. There's a green set and there's a white set. I guess it's not a big set, they're the same size. We called these homologous pairs, if you remember before. A set you get from your dad and a set you get from your mom. This cell has two sets of chromosomes, so we say that that cell is diploid. Or diploid. Diploid means two sets of chromosomes. That's different from haploid, which means a single set of chromosomes. Haploid is a cell with only one set. If I take away one of each pair, I have a cell with one set of chromosomes. Nice. That's a haploid cell. Nice. In humans, we have haploid cells in our sperms and eggs. Plants have these haploid cells in special bodies that are called gametophytes. 
And I'll show you some examples of gametophytes in, in the lectures to come. Now, how are the gametophytes created? They're created by a process called meiosis. If you remember, meiosis is the process where you go from diploid to haploid cells. In humans, the, ce the cell goes through meiosis and splits up the chromosomes. I don't know if you remember this, but I did this big process of meiosis where we end up with haploid cells. Plants do this too, and plants go from sporophyte to gametophyte by the process of forming spores by meiosis. I'm going to show you how this occurs. All right. But remember, if you go from a diploid cell to a haploid cell, you have to go through meiosis. Haploid cells can turn into diploid cells through a process called fertilization. One haploid cell can come together with another haploid cell and form a new cell that's called a zygote. That's what happens when our sperms fertilize our eggs in human sexual reproduction. The sperm and egg come together and form a zygote, which is a diploid cell. So this is the process you're going to see in the next several slides. It's called alternation of generations, and it's what plants do in their sexual lifestyles. And so the first thing we're going to examine is the sex, the sex of a moss. You ready for some moss sex? <laughs> Here we go. This is moss sex. <laughs> moss sex means like more sex in Spanish. Oh, it does. <laughs> Got it. Okay, this is in your book on the top of page 664. Now, this picture is a little bit different than the one in your book, but you're going to have to get along with this one. Are you um, moving this camera at all, Taylor? Taylor? No, I think it's Yeah. Okay. There you go. This, uh, this is the moss reproductive life cycle. And we're going to start with the green moss plants here. And they're shown in your book where it says male and female gametophyte. Right here on the right side of the top of page 664. You see where it says male gametophyte and female gametophyte? Yes. 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 Please do. Very bad. Got the shakes. <laughs> this is where we're looking here. This is these right here. These are your gametophytes. They're plants. They're moss plants. But these plants have cells with only one set of chromosomes. They have cells like this. Whoops. I'm sorry. They have cells like this with one set of chromosomes. Let's put a white one here. <laughs> Y'all got to pay attention here, okay, Taylor? This is difficult <laughs> stuff. Probably the most difficult stuff we do before the next test. <coughs> so you need to try and pay attention and understand. Here are the moss gametophytes. Why do we call them gametophytes? Because they make gametes. They make sperms and eggs. These things will actually make sperms and eggs. And where do they do it? They do it at the very ends of their branches here. And now again, these are the little plants that you see the fuzzy stuff on, the fuzzy green stuff on a rock. You know, the stuff we saw on the tree out there, at the base of the tree. So at the ends, if you look at their little plant bodies, at the very ends of their plant bodies are special structures called antheridia and archegonia. Big words again. The antheridia make sperm cells, and the archegonia make egg cells. And what happens is, whenever the moss gets wet, the sperm swim from the antheridia to the archegonia through water. And the sperm fertilize the egg. And the sperm is haploid, and the egg is haploid. 
So what happens when a haploid sperm fertilizes a haploid egg? Makes a dihaploid. Or a diploid. Makes a diploid zygote. Woo! And that's this zygote here. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> a little excessive. Wait, oh. Take a look in your book right here. You see the sperm swimming from the antheridium Dang, yeah. to the archegonium of the egg. Oh, see that? Fertilization occurs, and that forms a zygote. Does it go in that hole right there? Yes, it goes down through the opening, fertilizes the egg, and that forms a zygote, a diploid cell. A cell that has two sets of chromosomes. So now we have a diploid, the sperm comes in and brings a set of chromosomes. And now we have a diploid cell, the zygote, up here. And that zygote will grow into the stalk and capsule. See the stalk and capsule there? So you see the stalk and capsule grow up out of the female uh, gametophyte. And there they show it right there. And inside that capsule, meiosis will occur. And the process of meiosis produces spores, which are haploid cells again. And those spores fly through the air. The capsule opens up, the spores fly through the air, the spores land somewhere, and grow into a new moss plant. And the moss has sexually reproduced. That's moss sex when the sperm swim to the egg and fertilize the egg. Sperm swim to the egg, fertilize the egg, you get the zygote. The zygote grows into a stalk and capsule, which it shows right here. Inside the capsule, meiosis is occurring. The meiosis produces spores that come out of the capsule, land somewhere, and grow these, these little runners that shoot up new gametophytes. So that's the life cycle. That's how a moss has sex. That's moss sexually reproducing. And when you have sexual reproduction, you can create a lot of variation in your offspring. Remember like the Wimpaws. Um, sex allows new young that are different from the parents. You want to see video footage of moss sex? I hope oh, you want to yeah. see video footage too. Uh... Here we go. Stalking capsule keep growing into a new plant? No, it just sits there above the old, that's the stalking capsule right there. It just sits there growing right on top of the old so plant. So the plant below it continues to live though, right? Continues to live. Hey, after these three videos, can I use those Yeesh. Okay, watch it. Whoops. During their life cycle. The sporophyte generation in bryophytes develops from the gametophyte. Sporophytes receive much of their nutrition from the gametophyte. Spores are produced by meiosis in the capsule of the sporophyte. The spore capsule ripens, bursts, and releases the spores. A spore germinates to form a protonema. The antheridium develops on the male gametophyte. Sperm form within the antheridium. The archegonium develops on the female gametophyte. An egg forms within the archegonium. Sperm are released from the antheridium and swim to the archegonium. Fertilization takes place inside the archegonium and a zygote is formed. There's a diploid zygote. The zygote divides by mitosis to form a new sporophyte in the form of a stalk and capsule. Okay, that went through it kind of fast. But that's the, let me, uh, let me just rewind a little bit here. That's the sporophyte. Any time, the, the thing of, the part of a plant that is diploid, meaning has cells with two sets of chromosomes, is called the sporophyte. They call it the sporophyte because it makes the spores. It makes the spores by meiosis. Meiosis happens in the capsule. The spores are made. Here, here's the spores being made, and those spores that come out there, those are haploid spores because they were made by meiosis. Haploid meaning they only have one set of chromosomes. See? And so they're released and they land, that's a spore that has landed, 
And coming out of that grows a new kind of a runner called a protonema. And growing up from that protonema, that's the new gametophyte. That's the new moss plant. And you can't, you know, with your eyes, when you're looking at these mosses, they're just little green things. But if you could look real closely, you'd see the protonema and the moss, green moss plant shooting up from it. And each of those green moss plants can produce, some of them are male and can produce sperm. That, the one on the left is male and produces sperm. And the one on the right is female and produces eggs. The sperm are haploid. The eggs are haploid. And the sperm will swim to the eggs there woo, and fertilize the eggs. And now that will grow a whole new stalk and capsule. So what kind of plant is that? Do you understand the life cycle? That's a moss. It's a moss. You know those little green felt things you see, we see on the trees? That's what, if you could see them close enough, that's what they'd look like. So if you rub across your fingers across it, are you, are you breaking those things? Probably? Yeah, you could, yeah. You could see them if you look close enough. And the mosses that are growing at the base of our trees are really small. And those little stalks look like black threads. And they only come out at certain times of year. But you can see them if you look for them. What time of year they grow? I think it's in the spring. Next few hours. And at times when it's real wet. Right <laughs> we should go look right now, bro. Moss sex? Everybody give them moss sex. Yeah, one more time. No, we need moss. We need moss. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a, a question about them in particular? Yeah. I did. Yes. Can we go look at them and see if we have No, any not right now because we got to do fern sex and then we got to do pine tree sex. Oh. 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 Okay, you ready for fern sex? Fern sex is on page 665. Okay. Everybody turn to 665. Let's talk about fern sex. Fern sex works a little bit differently. We're going to start with the mature sporophyte. What does it mean when I say sporophyte? What's that mean? It makes spores. It makes spores, and is it diploid or haploid? Diploid. 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 So there's the fern. It's, it's called a frond, a fern frond. Just a fern like you see outside. Outside the gym, there's all these fern fronds. Okay? The fern fronds grow up from a rhizome. A rhizome is a stem that runs horizontally and that shoots up these fronds. If you turn a frond over and look on the back, you see a lot of brown dots. I showed those to you last time when we went out there. The brown dots are called sori. I'm sorry if you don't remember that. I had a question. Uh, Sometimes don't they grow? Grow bigger on the bottom of those ferns and you pull them off. Yeah. The source. Yeah. They look like a pea. Yeah. You pull it off. Yes, you pull them off. What is that? Is that like a? That's a sori too. A sorus that creates spores. Sweet. Yeah. I've seen one. Of Taylor, those. up here, Bennett. I'm sorry if you haven't seen one. Yes, if you haven't seen one, I'm sorry. Now the sorus. Yeah. Listen, the sorus undergoes meiosis just like the mosses did, and produces spores. The spores are haploid, have one set of chromosomes. And they float through the air, and they land somewhere. And here's the part you've probably never seen before. If they land in a wet area, they grow into the gametophyte stage. The gametophyte is the part of the plant that makes gametes, sperms and eggs. You've probably never seen a fern gametophyte before, but it's shaped like a heart, and it's called a prothallus. It's a little heart-shaped thing. It's not very big. It's about that big. It's shaped like a heart, and you, you can find it. It looks like a little leaf. Does it grow? Does it, does it, grow it grows in soil? wet areas, and it's usually in in places where there's a, a pools of water have collected. Uh, does, it, does it grow sori on it too? No, it does not grow sori. Sori produce spores. This thing grows antheridia and archegonia on it that produce sperms and eggs. Yes, Bennett? Uh, the picture's purple, but in, in the, is it green? 
Yeah, it's uh, it's it's actually kind of grayish tan, really. Maybe it's slightly green. I don't have. I'll I'll look up after after we finish here and see if I can find a good picture of one. I need to put one in here. Is there yeah. is there sauruses on uh, other plant leaves and stuff? Just just ferns and uh, horsetails and club mosses are the only things I've that seen, have sauruses. I've seen a leaf on a tree have those yeah, same little right. pea type things on the bottom of it. What is that? Uh, that's not these. But what do you know what it is? I don't know what those are. Those are probably maybe insect uh, egg cases. They're they're all on the line, it's like just yeah, like that looks. Probably oh. insect egg cases. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's not these. <laughs> now, so these little heart shaped structures will will grow wherever a spore lands if it's real wet. It's got to be real wet. And they'll grow into this heart shape, and on the bottom of the little heart shape is the antheridia that produce sperm. So sperm are made down here. Up here are where eggs are made. And the sperm will swim through the water to the eggs. So it has to be wet because it has swimming sperm. And the sperm swim through the water, fertilize the eggs, and a fertilized egg is called a what? A zygote. So once the sperm fertilizes the egg, it shows a little sperm. They have weird looking sperm with like six tails. Sperm swim, <laughs> fertilize the egg, then you have a zygote. And where the zygote was, which was right here, will grow up into a new frond. A new sporophyte. Sweet. And that, that new sporophyte will be the frond and at its base will grow a rhizome and more fronds will come up from the rhizome. Because it's a circle. So yeah, it's a cycle, yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, so this thing, the gametophyte is haploid, has one set of chromosomes, the sporophyte is diploid, has two sets of chromosomes. I think I have some good video footage here that shows, yes, Here's another look at the life cycle. There's the heart-shaped prothallus that produces sperms down here and eggs up here. There's the fronds. And... Perhaps most important in the evolution of the application of management are changes in reproductive patterns. There's a fern, baby fern. That's a prothallus. It is green. That's a prothallus. That's the heart-shaped thing. It's folded in half. Isn't that weird looking? In this cycle called alternation of generation. In this cycle, the diploid spore-producing plant, or sporophyte, alternates with the haploid gamete-producing plant, or gametophyte. Okay, right there, that's the heart-shaped prothallus. That's the gametophyte. Down here it's going to make sperm, right there it's going to make eggs. And this shows the sperm swimming to the eggs. Watch the weird looking sperm. Gametophytes need moisture. Often the That's sperm. sperm must swim or be washed to the female egg. There's the egg. Fertilization doubles the chromosome number to diploid. See the new chromosomes? This stimulates That's the a zygote. Of the new sporophyte. And that grows up into the new fern plant. There's a little dots on the back. Tell that the sporophyte needs meiosis to divide and form haploid spores. Spores that reach a moist, favorable environment grow into new gametophytes, and the cycle begins again. Isn't that weird? Well, it's really annoying. <laughs> so the spore lands somewhere and grows into this heart shaped structure, the prothallus. That produces gametes, sperms and eggs. Sperm fertilizes the egg, forms a zygote. The zygote grows up into a new fern. That's the fern life cycle. You're going to have to write about this in your essay if you roll this for the next chapter. Sweet. Scary? Pro. No, that's pretty easy. That's Pro. When the, uh, when the sperm, I guess, gets released and swims, is, there's only one take, or is that all? <coughs> like, there's only one take? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, multiple eggs have to get fertilized. No, it can, it can fertilize multiple eggs and you can get multiple plants grow up. Yeah, good question.
And each plant will be a little bit different because it's a different egg and a different sperm. And so that's what we're after, the diversity. That's what sex is for. The diversity, it produces lots of different young. Okay, time for pine tree sex. Pine tree sex, page 667. I thought it was two, but it's two, it looks like two eggs or something. Here's how pine tree sex works. A big pine tree that you see out there, that's the sporophyte. Now, the sporophyte has what we call cones. And the spores are in the cones. And inside it has female cones and male cones. The female cones are uh, usually, it's, it's messed up here, usually the female cones are on the higher branches and the male cones are on the lower branches, but they have that reversed here. That's okay, that's not that important. But the female cone has spores inside it that go through meiosis, and there it shows the spores there. And the spores basically form the archegonia, just like we saw before, and the archegonia produce eggs. So there's a bunch of stuff it's saying in here, megaspores. Um, you don't have to memorize this. Just understand that in the female cones, eggs are produced. And in the male cones, pollen grains are produced. And you know what's inside the pollen grains? Sperm. Sperm. <laughs> The pollen grain blows the wind, blows the pollen grain from one tree, and the pollen grain floats through the air and goes inside a cone, inside a pine cone. Remember when we were hitting the gun? Hold on just a second, let me get you a pine cone. <laughs> okay. Wait, Sophie. Hey, everybody real quick. Get the female gamino type. Alien. It looks like it's like an alien. Yeah, no. No, a pine tree is a female. Okay, wait, I'm back. Stop talking. Listen. Listen. Listen to me. The pine cone sits in the tree like this. The pollen grains blow through the air and go inside the pine cone. And at the very base of each scale sits the ovules, the eggs. And the pollen grains, remember, hold sperm. And so now the sperm and eggs are right next to each other. And the sperm can fertilize the eggs. <coughs> what do we get when the sperm fertilizes an egg? A zygote. A zygote. And that's way down at the base of each scale. And the zygote forms, in this case, a hard covering called, and, and forms into a seed. And in the case of the pine tree, the seed grows a wing, like a helicopter wing. And it takes about a year or two for the seed to form. So what happens during that time is the pine cone closes up. Sometimes a storm will knock these pine cones out when they're all closed up, and they're real heavy. I threw one at my sister one time and hit her in the eye with it, and she had to wear an eye patch for two weeks. Oh, yeah. 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 It was the first major injury I had made on somebody. I was very proud of myself. What was, what was the second one? There's been lots. Anyway, so I learned that heavy, the pine cones are very heavy when these things are closed, but what happens is they close. Then they'll open up a couple years later, and, and the seed will be developed, and the little wing will be um, grown. And then the wind blows, and the, the seeds fall out and kind of spin around, and the wind carries them. And hopefully the wind will carry them far enough from the parent tree that they'll land in sunlight and be able to grow. Did you say they open a couple years later? Yes, it takes a couple years for the seeds to develop and the wings to grow. How does the pine cone stay on the thought it stays The pine cone just stays attached to the tree. And then after all the seeds have blown out, after a couple years all the seeds have blown out, the pine cone falls off the tree. So this pine cone has released seeds from each scale. That's an old... So how old do you think that is? This pine cone? Probably several years. Many years. 
Five, six years. I'm Yeah. Yeah. Video footage. Video footage and we're done. Wait, watch this first. Quiet, please. Just a two minute video and then we're done. A pine is a common conifer all Why? over the northern hemisphere. Don't, no, don't clean up. Don't clean up. I want you to watch this. Come on, we'll guys. We'll clean up after this. Right, the cleaning right. up makes a lot of noise right. and it disturbs everyone from watching the video. Here we go. You ready? Footage. A pine is a common conifer found all over the northern hemisphere. It can be used as a model for the seed production process in all gymnosperms. The adult sporophyte, the pine tree, develops male and female cones on separate branches. Female cones develop two ovules on the upper surface of each cone scale. Each ovule contains haploid megaspores. Male cones produce microspores by meiosis. The microspores develop into pollen grains. Each winged pollen grain is a four-celled male gametophyte. The female gametophyte grows, producing two or more archegonia, each of which contains an egg. During pollination, a wind-borne pollen grain falls near the opening in one of the ovules of the female cone. Each male gametophyte forms a pollen tube that penetrates the tissue of the female gametophyte. When the pollen tube has grown into the archegonium, a sperm cell from the male gametophyte fertilizes the egg. The zygote develops into an embryo and a mature seed is produced. The female cone opens, releasing the seeds. When conditions are favorable, the seed germinates into a new young sporophyte, a pine tree seedling. Yay, that's your essay. Each tree has male and female cones. Usually the male cones are towards the bottom of the pine tree, and the female cones are towards the top, and that lets the seeds fall farther. Drew, did you have a question? Yeah, remember when we were hitting golf balls at that range where I, where I shot 93? Yeah. And that one match? Oh, God. But remember when uh, we were hitting balls in the range and we hit the pine tree on the, all the pollen, which is The pollen comes out. Yeah. 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 Then we were fertilizing some trees. That's right. We were helping them out with trees. Nice. nice. All right. Peace out. Will us out.